What is going on, everybody? Hope you all had a good weekend and are thus far enjoying E3. Today, for you, Jabonis, I wanted to give my impressions on the first three conferences with grades as well. Now, for those new to the channel and haven't seen my previous E3 videos, I'm gonna talk about the games and announcements that interest me, not every single game and feature. So, let's get things started by talking about the Xbox conference, which I thought had a solid start. It was like watching an episode of Monday Night Raw where it starts off on fire, then it gets boring during the middle of the, of the conference or middle of the, of the show and then it, it ends on fire as well so it's it one of those up and down kind of conferences you know out the gate they started talking about the xbox one x aka the scorpio they talked about you know what's under the hood what makes it the most powerful cons console uh its release date which is in, in november as well as surprising which is surprisingly at 500 dollars you know i and many others thought it was being even higher than that at a, at you know 700 even in my opinion, it looks nice. It, it's not a, a brand new design, just a smaller gray Xbox One S design. But you know, that's not terrible, but at the same time, you kind of think they would have went with, you know, just a, a different design than was already there. I'm definitely getting it and want to pre-order as soon as I can. I, I do kind of wish it could, you know, come in more colors. I'm sure they'll, they'll have like special editions on the line where it's to be red for Gears of War, or, you know, a, a greenish color for, for Halo, things like that. Also, I think it should have come with a, with a Elite controller, just because, you know, the Elite controller needs to, to be, like, like, the main controller of Xbox. Not for, like, the, you know, the One S or, you know, the the, the classic one, Day One Edition Xboxes, but, you know, the Xbox One X should have a Elite controller come with it. It's just m my panel on that. Anyway, switching from that to the games, they announced a new Forza Motorsports game. Those familiar to my channel No, I love the Motorsports series. It looks good. I really hope they bring uh, back the Prog map once more. We'd love to see the, the Prog map in, in 4K. It's going to be 6 frames a second, which is a first for Forza on consoles. They didn't really care about the new Porsche or the talking about the Porsche. Just not really a, a big Porsche guy. Now, for all my subscribers that, that watch Where Is, a game featured in this series is getting a much needed sequel, Metro Exodus, which is basically Metro 2035. It is finally coming. If you haven't seen my Metro video, link to me in the description box below so you can check that out for where it is. I was so excited when 4A name was, was mentioned and I think I might have actually got a hard on just because of, you know, that trailer. Now, I, I cannot wait for this game and best belief is going to be around the this channel for a long time. And it's one of, one of the games so far at E3 that has me pumped. After the water starts showing off, you know, some, some PC to Xbox games, some indie games. I don't really care all as much about indie games. You know, it's a huge thing in the community. I'm almost like, hey, indie games, we need more of those. And I'm just, I just don't, I'm not an indie game person. And you know, they're featured very heavily at at, at, at this uh, conference, which was a, a low point for me personally. I'm not saying for you it's, it's a low point, but for me, someone who's not really into indie games, this is where the, it kind of got a little boring when it came to Xbox conference. Now, I will say that the new Minecraft stuff that, that they showed off was pretty cool, and maybe I actually want to try it, try to play Minecraft. And I'm not a big Minecraft person. I think I played it once, and, and I was like, yeah, this is not my, my cup of tea. But the new things are added to the game. I mean, want to rethink that and try it out some more. They showed off Assassin's Creed uh, gameplay. Outside of Rogue, I've owned all the Assassin's Creed games on consoles, and I cannot wait for this game. You know, we in this community have been waiting for an Assassin's Creed game based in Egypt since the very first game. The game looks astonishing. I really hope it's good because the last few have been on the boring side of things, and I, I think Ubisoft, they need a good game right now because their last few games they released have not been good. And it's, it's just, you know, you have to have a point when it comes to Ubisoft where it's like, hey, can we even trust you to make a good game anymore? Because we came out with Ghost Recon and that game died. We came out with For Honor and that game died. You had Division and that game died. Siege is, you know, all sh kind of shit fucked up right now. So it's like, can you create a good game that we can rely on you for and, and do good? Like I said, the previous games were boring as fuck. They weren't bad, but, you know, Syndicate was pretty boring. It's pretty dull at like a, the first 20, 10, 15, 15 hours of the game. So can this Assassin's Creed game return Assassin's Creed series to you know, being one of those great games we, we, we enjoy? Now they announced and showed off a popular PC game called Players Unknown Battlegrounds. A lot of my friends who play on, on both PC and Xbox and PlayStation, they have been talking about this game a lot. So I'm interested to see you know, if it's any good and if, if it can live up to the hype that everyone has just been talking about. It looks good though. I will say that it looks like it's pretty interesting. I definitely try it out. And I just hope it's, I, I, we, I think we need more of these in these these nonsense games on, on consoles. I know there's a lot of these on PC. And by nonsense, I mean, I mean games where you're just doing in and you're just doing a bunch of dumb shit. 
you know, like smack us on in the back of the head with a fucking frying pan. After that, we got some some more looks at the new State of Decay. I'm, I'm, I surprisingly enjoyed the first game. I don't really like zombie games, but State of Decay was really good. This one will have co-op, so we can't wait to see if it's even better than the first one. Then they showed off a new Dragon Ball game, which is basically Ban and Nemco stepping into the 2.5D fighting game realm with Marvel vs. Capcom, even their own game, Tekken Tag. It's a 3v3 tag Dragon Ball game, what, what else do, do you need to be said? And I'm a Dragon Ball fanboy, so the second I saw Goku, I was going to buy regardless. You know, I don't even care if it, what it actually was. The second they showed, showed Goku, I was like, alright, I'm buying that, because I'm that kind of a fanboy that goes to Dragon Ball. And then something happened, a game was shown that I didn't even know was getting the sequel. I had no, I, like... This is why I enjoy when there's no leaks for something because there was this has been kind of a quiet E3. There's been some leaks and you know that, that sucks. But this was there was no leak around this, so I had no idea that it was getting a sequel. And that is that is Ori and the Will of the Wisps, a sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest, a game that is one of the best games created in a, a true work of art. A game I talked about a lot on this channel. It's a stunning looking game, and I, I hope it captures me the same way the first Ori did because I I love the Ori series. Anyone who's been on this channel for a long period of time know I'm always talking about how good of Ori and Black Forest is. And it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful game and it's a very immersive game. And hopefully the next the new Ori will also be able to capture that. So then they talked about the backwards compatibility a little bit more. Announced that the games from the original Xbox will be coming to Xbox One. So we might be able to play our old favorites like Jade Empire, Star Wars, Banks, Future Frenzy, and the old you know Ubisoft games like Rainbow Six, Rainbow Six games, the old Splinter Cells, and more. So I, I think it is a, a, a cool thing to, that they're adding to the backwards compatibility thing. But the problem is, when it comes to like backwards compatibility, is a lot of the games in there aren't games of interest. So say there's 300 games, but only 50 of those games are you know, actually of interest to you. So it's just too many games and not enough of the games that you, you actually want to play. And lastly, it showed off Bioware's new IP, Anthem. A game that basically looks like Destiny with a god upgrade. Shit looked great and definitely has me interested and eager to see more of the game. I can't wait for it. I'm a huge Bioware fan, you all know that. And so I have high hopes for my expectations are for are really, really high. So it may just be a, up in another freaking Division Destiny clone that's gonna be boring as fuck, or it could be a, a legit great game. Overall, I thought Xbox had a solid conference. Could have been better. Could have been, you know, less. Could have had less indie games and more first party games like maybe a new Jade Empire or a new IP in the action RPG genre, maybe something that makes you actually want to, you know, a, a standalone game that, that makes you want to buy the, the Xbox One S. I'm getting One S because I want to get X One S, but if you're someone who has a PS4 and not an Xbox One or a Nintendo Switch and not an and no Xbox One or PC and not an Xbox One, there was no game that says you need to get the Xbox One X just for this game. And that's kind of where the issue lies when it comes to Microsoft and how everyone sees them when it comes to their exclusives. There's no exclusives that makes you want to buy that system. But overall, I'll give Xbox a B- as a grade. Like I said, it was pretty solid. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It wasn't mediocre. It was a, a solid conference. Moving on to Bethesda. Sigh, Bethesda. What are you doing, baby? The conference was whack. I'm sorry, Bethesda. I, I, I love you, but Bethesda land theme was kind of just whack as hell to me. I personally don't really care about VR all that much. So seeing Fallout 4 VR just was nothing to me. I've already beaten the game, it's not that good of a game in my opinion to experience it again in VR. The conference was just them further milking Skyrim and Fallout 4. A Skyrim themed DLC for the Elder Scrolls Legends card game is coming and Skyrim freaking VR. Just more and more just milking their, the Skyrim and Fallout 4 instead of making you know new a new Fallout 4 or new Elder Scrolls and things like that. They just seems to milk these same two games. Now, they also announced Creation Club, which is basically a hub for mod creators and developers from Bethesda to, to make quick content for games like Fallout and Elder Scrolls, as well as uh, any other modders who want to make mods for the, the games. The downside to this is it seems like it's going to be a paid mod feature, and I, I think it's going to be optional. I don't think they're going to just make all mods, uh, you know, paid. They're going to give the option to your creator to make a mod if you want to get paid for it. You can if you don't. You can just release it for free. That's my thought on. It. I don't think it's like completely just all mods or paid mods. I don't. And, and, and regardless, this might have a bad fallout. Regardless of whether or not it's optional or not optional for you to make a paid mod. Steam had a similar situation where they made mods, uh, paid mods, and, and that blew back on them pretty, pretty freaking severe. So maybe it's interesting to have with Bethesda, with Creation Club. Maybe people will be more upset than because it's not 
you know, a fourth thing is optional for the creators of, of mods to, you know, seek payment for their creations. Anyways, they confirmed Skyrim 4, Nintendo Switch, and announced that what I'm guessing is an expansion to Dishonored, where you can, you're going to be tasked with killing the Outsider, which, that's pretty legit to me. Like, the Outsider's a pretty, he's a, if you play the Dishonored games, he is one of the focal characters of the entire franchise, so that thought of kill the Outsider is kind of interesting to me, and I can't wait for Wait to experience this game. Um, this was definitely a bright spot of the otherwise very, very boring conference. I love Dishonored and really just curious how this is all gonna play out and entirely like the, you know, the two characters that, that you see in the trailer like, is it co op or is it just like, you know, Dishonored 2 where you can play either Emily or play Corbell? So you know, you can play this one, the, the chick, or play the guy. So it's like, you know, what's going on here and, you know, how can you actually kill the outsider? Like, just there's a lot of question marks around this. Moving on though, their conference ended with two uh, new sequels, Evil Within 2 and A New Wolfenstein. I never finished the first Evil Within, I thought it was pretty good. Definitely want to get back into it and try to finish it. Definitely am interested in Evil Within 2. What I've played of the first Evil Within was really good and I like I said I really I enjoyed myself I thought it was a really really good game like I'm not a big horror uh, gamer like it's not like a fear thing it's just you know I don't really find horror games fun to play with Evil Thin the first one was pretty interesting pretty fun to me and I need to go back and finish and finish it before Evil Thin 2 comes out and I'm, I'm I, this is even though this is a mere tier game I'm, I'm excited for Evil Thin 2 I've never been really big on Wolfenstein, so I don't really care all much for this new Wolfenstein. I did enjoy the new order for what it was. But thought it was pretty fun and it did have a really decent story. I also really like the flashbacks to the old games of Wolfenstein. But outside of that, it was just kind of a mediocre game. But overall, I just thought about this. I had a very boring and whack conference. There was no top tier sequels, no no new IP. They ended it with you know mid tier game sequels being announced, and it's just you know it was just it was kind of flat. And it was just you know you could have did better with that. So like everything they showed on their conference could have been featured in either Sony's or Xbox's conference, or hell even freaking you know, Nintendo's conference. But you know they, they decided to have their own conference, and it was it, it was just uninteresting. And, very very lackluster. So for grid, I've given Bethesda a, a D minus for their E3 score. Lastly for today's video, we have EA. EA had a pretty you know decent to mediocre conference. You know the presenters didn't seem like they could read the teleprompter correctly, or maybe they didn't rehearse. There's a lot of very cringy things going on during this conference. But what about the games? Well, Madden is getting a game game most similar to that of the Journey from FIFA, which is not a bad thing. Definitely makes me more interested in this year's Madden than any other Madden in recent years. Like I said before. You know, 2K has my career for their basketball, and even with WWE, it has it's my all my career as well. And EA knows that there's a huge crowd for that market, so they put the journey into FIFA, and that went over very well. So now this year, they're putting a similar kind of story mode into Madden, and hopefully that will make Madden a very more interesting, interesting game. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. If it's a good story and if it's fun, I'm really excited to try it out. Speaking of FIFA, the journey is returning, and it looks like they're going to have real sport broadcasting feeds in the game like ESPN FC to you know, talk about Alex Hunter. It seems like the, the, the central theme of this game is whether or not Alex Hunter will or won't transfer. You know, in, in the first FIFA game, The Journey, uh, it was basically like this is your story. Alex Hunter is he's this, you know, this kid who no one really knows about and he becomes a star. In for so Journey 2 FIFA 18, it seems like now you're the bad guy. Now everyone's against you because the decisions that you may or may not made. And so with that, they also introduced uh, new movements so for FIFA 18, featuring you know having Ronaldo perform you no know, moves in the mode capture suit to make it even better and improve the movement of the core game itself. And FIFA does need that. FIFA for a while has struggled with you know being a very fluid game as compared to like PES, which is very fluid. And you know there's a lot of lottery action player reaction to game reaction that's just never there for games of FIFA. So they're trying to improve that, and it looks like they're going to do that very well. Then EA, they announced a partnership with the indie team, the ones behind Bro Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. The game is called A Way Out, and it looks good. Like, it might be the hidden gem of this year's E3. It's one of those games where you're looking at it like, that might be really, really fucking good. Like, it looks like it's gonna have, like, a really good story. It's gonna look like it's gonna be very fun to play. It's, it's a co-op game, but I'm pretty sure it's just, like, Brothers, you're gonna be able to play by yourself. Because even though Brother was, like, it was marked as a co-op game, you could still play it solo. So I'm curious if you can do the same thing with A Way Out, or you be able to play it solo, or is it strictly a co-op game? But it's also split screen, so you can do it with on a couch, or you can do it through on online. And it, it looks like it's going like to be a very story-driven, very interesting game. 
After that, we got some more Battlefield 1 content coming, some night maps, a, a snow theme expansion that'll add women soldiers to, to the fray, as well as the Russian military. It looks cool. I really do like snow maps and shooters. Like, it's one of my favorite things in shooters is have to play on, on like, night maps or snow maps. So, there's two things that they're at as Battlefield 1 that might make me want to go back to playing the game, because I, I stopped playing Battlefield 1. It's just a boring game. So, maybe, you know, throwing in the Russian military and throwing in these new maps will make it more, will spice up a little bit, for make you more interested into playing Battlefield 1. Then they showed off uh, the new Fast and Furious movie, I mean, the, the new Need Speed game called Need Speed Payback. It looks gorgeous, I will say that. It's a very pretty looking game. Need for Speed hasn't had a good game in such a long time. For me, I've enjoyed it since the, the original Most Wanted, not the remake Most Wanted. So hopefully this one is really good. It looks like a Fast and Furious knockoff. It looks like, you know, just like a Fast and Furious, they're putting racing in the back seat and making action you know, the, the, the forefront. Of, of, of the game where you know, action takes the wheel, so to speak. Now, the main event of this show was Battlefront 2, and oh my lord, that game looks unreal. Like, shit is stupid beautiful. Like, the game looks great. It looks like they're, you know, actually making the Battlefront Battlefront instead of, you know, a Call of Duty clone with a Star Wars skin like the first one. It looks like Battlefront is going to be, we thought it was going to be a Battlefield game. What's, what's what makes it with the Star Wars style, and Star Wars appeal, Star Wars you know, flair? It looks like a great game. It's like they're they looking to the feedback of the fan base, and it's like, hey, we heard you, so we're going to do what you guys want and make this game the way it should have been made the first time around. You know, all DLC for Battlefront 2 will be free. They added the features fans have been asking for, including a, a canon story mode that'll bridge that between episodes six and seven. So, they dug it. Say EA, they're, they're, they did, they did a lot of good things when it comes to you know, listening to fan feedback. A lot of their games now have free DLC, including this Battlefront 2. So it's like, you know, you can't be too mad at EA anymore. Like, yeah, they had a shit record, you know, but they've turned around a lot, in my opinion. They're they're going up there as one of the, the top publishers um, of, the, of the last couple years because they've been you know, doing their best to improve upon their, their community relations. And overall, I think the games look great. Even EBA Live looked cool. But what held the conference back was you know the dead crowd. The crowd seemed extremely uninterested in a game. Like there was rarely any freaking cheers at all. And I'm not saying it's not because the, the games didn't look cool. It just seemed like the crowd just didn't care or was just uninterested and just you know out of it. Um, and then there's the cringy speakers, so like, there was one guy who legit paused, like he had lost what he was going to say, or he didn't know where, where to follow the teleprompter, like he was just, just confused, and, and he just, I don't know where to start talking against. So it's like, it was very cringy watching a lot of presenters. And it has a lot to do with why this conference doesn't get a high score for me, because, you know, the presenters just didn't, wasn't there for me. You know, you had the, the, the chick who was great, she did a great job for Battlefront 2, I don't remember her name, so I apologize for just saying she's the chick. Um, the guy who, who was in a, a way out, he also he had a lot of energy. He got the crowd in, into the conference, got him pumped up. The only downside to me when it came to the, the, the girl, I, like I said, don't remember her name, was the crowd was freaking whistling and, and cat calling her. Like, let her present the game. You know, chill out, don't do that shit. Let her present the game. And at, besides that, it wasn't, the biggest negative for me outside of the crowd and outside of the presenters was they didn't show Anthem gameplay. It was shown at the Xbox conference instead. And, you know, that, I don't mind them showing at the Xbox conference, but you could have showed something EA other than here's a, here's a teaser, go watch the Xbox conference. Like, come on EA, that's kind of bullshit. So for a grade, I give the EA conference a C. That's my grade for EA. Now with all that said, that's it for this video. I'll catch you guys next time with my review of Ubisoft, Sony, Nintendo, all that being one video together. And after that, you know, maybe you know Monday or this weekend, I'll upload you know my total opinion of this year's E3 and who I will crown as you know the winner of E3, so to speak. You know, so hope you all enjoyed this video. Please do leave a thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. Peace out.